Today on Refined, pull over. The old Seattle cop car is getting a new lease on life. Good morning, there you go. Plus, I just fed a bear. I just fed a bear, first time for everything. Refined set sail to Sitka and learns the hidden Alaska gem has so much to offer. And the delicious desserts that take the cake when it comes to decorating. Seattle Refined starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Refine. I'm Gary Swanson. You know, when you're driving and you see a cop car, what do you normally do? Well, many people slow down and double check that they're not breaking any laws. But Refine's John Prentice found a couple of police cruisers that have drivers doing a double take. And the retro rides are a serious blast from the past. I used to think it was the badge, which was the main symbolism for police officers, but I, I've come to the conclusion. It's the police cars that is the public's first exposure to the police on the roadways. It's what Hollywood uh, makes their movies and films of. It's what, you know, those are the vehicles behind you in your rearview mirror that, uh, you know, you don't want behind you, including when you're an officer. It's our mobile office. This 1978 Plymouth Fury Washington State Patrol car, King County Sheriff's Office 67 Fury, and 1970 Seattle Police Plymouth Satellite were lovingly restored to full operational condition by volunteers for Seattle's Metropolitan Police Museum. Jim Ritter is the founder and a current Seattle police officer. I've always been interested in history, and when I got hired by the Seattle PD, um, you know, I wanted to know what their history was. My new agency, my new profession, and I realized they only had a small room with, you know, some artifacts, a lot of which had been damaged, and I'm thinking, God, for an agency that's been around here since 1861, this is nothing. And where's our history? So. Jim went on a hunt for history and found badges, photographs, uniforms, all kinds of stuff, and with donations from local cops. Eventually, uh, we uh, built the police museum and, and started in 1997. Then came the cars, restored using period correct parts and police equipment, very rare stuff. And Jim says he could not have predicted the reaction these vehicles would get from the public. When we uh, started restoring our Seattle Police 1970 satellite, I had it parked out in front of the museum, and there were about uh, eight uh, younger males who I recognized as gang members. They were coming up the sidewalk towards me, and I'm in plain clothes, and I'm thinking, oh boy, this may not turn out well. And so the, the leader of this group said, hey man, is that your car? And I go, yeah. And the minute I said yes, all the attitudes were dropped, and it was 18-year-old kids wanting to see a cool car. They were interested in seeing the engine and the interior. This is old school stuff. I saw the magic that this car had towards that group of, of, of young folks who uh, certainly had no reason to like the police. And uh, when I saw that connection, that made me an instant believer that this car has the ability to change people's attitudes about the police, even people that don't like the police. Jim says these old patrol cars make regular appearances at parades and car shows, offering opportunities for regular people to interact with police officers in a setting other than emergencies and traffic stops. And more are on their way to being back on the street. I think law enforcement is kind of a mystery to most people. And I think it's important for people to understand that cops are real people. Ty is a volunteer and retired Seattle police officer and says restoring these old cop cars is worth the work. People see you driving the, the old car down the street and they just get big smiles on their face. But how does a vintage police car stack up against a modern one? We took the 78 Fury to the Washington State Patrol Academy track to find out. With another muscular Mopar in front for inspiration and a current state trooper, Mike Cheek, behind the wheel. How would you describe the uh, handling characteristics of this vehicle? I like the way mine handles now better. Steering's a little bit more loose than the modern car. Uh, the suspension is a little rougher. The Washington State Patrol's emergency vehicle operation course includes freeway section and one of the most challenging stretches of two-lane highway I've ever seen. Designed to test troopers' skills when driving at the limit. I appreciate what I have today, but this was, this was what they had back then, so this was a good car for the day. 
440 cubic inch, carbureted engine, front disc brakes, rear drum brakes, uh, no analog brakes, those don't, didn't exist in 1978. Tim Shiwi is a retired WSP trooper and patrolled on I-5 in a fury just like this one for a small portion of his 30 year career with the state patrol. Kind of a simplistic car, back in those days there wasn't a lot in the vehicle, you basically had a three channel radio, PA system, lights and the siren, and that was about it. There were no cell phones phones back in these days so you basically were dependent on your radio. You may not have frequencies or certain areas that you could even get out on the radio so you basically had no communication. So. Was it kind of scary? Uh, you know it was just the way it was. Mike's WSP Ford Interceptor offers sharp contrast. The thing that you see straight away is our mobile uh, computer terminal. We use that to run vehicles and registrations and driver's checks. Well, it's pretty much instantaneous returns. Also, a much better radio, airbags, all-wheel drive, ABS brakes. Overall, safer for troopers and the public. Would you trade it for uh, that car over there? Uh, no. <laughs> but a piece of equipment the new car doesn't have? This swanky hat rack. Troopers have worn campaign hats since the mid-60s, and this is just something to keep them uh, in good shape. This hat's a little small for me. It looks good, though. <laughs> Tim says Washington State Patrol equipment has changed a lot over the years, but the mission of keeping the roads safe has stayed the same. And cars like this one? Just like the patrol cars are today, that's a very important part of the job. Can't exist without them. The real value of this is for the public to see it, to the public to see it rolling, for the public to see the equipment we used to use back in the day. You know, when the police museum educational facility was open, we were there for 20 years in Pioneer Square. Jim says the Pioneer Square Museum was shut down in 2017 due to ground stability concerns. As a result, the collection is currently in storage with the hope of one day finding it a suitable home. I would love to, to find a person that's got so much money he doesn't know what to do with it. Uh, saying, hey, we've got a 50,000 square foot building in downtown Seattle. We'd love to have you bring your police artifacts and your entire fleet of police vehicles down so everybody can see it. That's not a reality, that's a dream, but uh, you just never know. And you know, if that phone rings someday from somebody who's got something that will work for the police museum and has the funding to continually support it, we're all ears. John Prentice, Seattle Refined. To watch that story again, head to seattlerefined.com. If you're on the hunt for your own Northwest Island, then you may be able to get a good deal on this piece of real estate. Trump Island is still up for sale after being on the market for five years. Despite its name, it has no affiliation with the presidential Trumps, at least from what we can tell. The 30 acres of private land sits between Decatur and Lopez. It comes with a 7,000 square foot home with six bedrooms. To check it out and to see how much it's going for, head to our website. Gallery Find is just getting started. Sitka is a hidden gem. Yeah, it really is. Culture and Creatures, the getaway that shows you a side of Alaska you get to see. Plus. Yes, it's a cake. It's not plastic? I said no. <laughs> Refine learns how to make Instagram-worthy mirror cakes. We'll be right back. This one. Welcome back to Refine, I'm Gard Swanson. Our Refine team has officially been bitten by the travel bug. You know, we've been to some really incredible getaways lately, from Bend, Oregon to Southern California, but nothing quite tops our journey to the last frontier. As Seth Wayne shows us, our sponsor, Windstar Cruises, sets sail to Alaska and takes you to places that you will never forget. It's a new day on our Alaska adventure. Sun's popping up on the horizon, the sea is calm, and the captain and his crew are getting ready to anchor in Sitka Sound. It's a city that's spread over one of the largest islands in the country. A perfect spot for Windstar's star legend to call home for the day. Sitka is a hidden gem. Yeah, it really is. It's so awesome here. It's, it's absolutely, on a day like this too, it's absolutely gorgeous. Kerry Pensinovich grew up here and loves sharing her tiny town with the rest of the world. Coming here, you're supporting and you're getting to know a really close-knit, awesome community. And Carrie knows the rich history that surrounds this charming city of 8,000 people. This is where the, they lowered the Russian flag and raised up the first, uh, first American flag. 
um, in the state, and it was a military transfer of power. For $7.2 million, the U.S. bought Alaska from Russia at this very spot back in 1867. So every year on Alaska Day, we, we commemorate that, and then we have a reenactment here. There's a variety of shops, galleries, crafts, and the oldest Russian Orthodox cathedral in the New World. St. Michael's dates back to 1848. A fire destroyed most of it in the 1960s, but it's been rebuilt, complete with a bell tower which goes off every day at noon. No fancy technology here, just good old-fashioned elbow grease. Down the road is Sitka's National Historic Park, which is one of the smallest national parks in the country. You'll see totem poles, countless salmon spawning, all with gorgeous views of the star legend. But my favorite part of this charming city has to be the Fortress of the Bears, a safe haven for orphan bears that runs solely on admission fees and donations. It's home to seven black and brown bears whose mothers either abandoned them as cubs or died. Will they live the rest of their lives here? Yes. They cannot live in, in the wild so anymore, So th right? these bears will be with us the rest of their lives. Chris Turner works with them all, including Toby, the lone female of the bunch. And boy, can she eat. Right now, the brown bears are on 35 pounds of food each a day. Each day? Each day, and that's each bear. We go to the grocery stores and get um, their outdates of fruits, vegetables, and produce. We go to the butcher and get the fatty cut-offs of beef. Bears are a true omnivore, so they will eat pretty much anything you present to them, which uh, makes our lives a little bit easier. Why don't you feed her one of these pineapples that we got? <laughs> okay. See if she enjoys that. So just throw it out for her, and she'll go and get it. Hey, Toby, just throw it? Yep. Okay, good morning. There you go. I just fed a bear. <laughs> I just fed a bear. First time for everything. The warmth and friendliness of Sitka can't be beat. And with Windstar Cruises, the fun continues on board with some native dances. Feel free to clap your hands or even stomp your feet like that. <laughs> and that is what uh, was traditionally done by the Shlinga people long ago. Local culture, creatures, sights, and scenery, Sitka is just one of the amazing spots Windstar will take you throughout Alaska. Refine wants to send you on an Alaska Windstar cruise. We're giving away a trip for two that includes a 12-night stay in an ocean view suite. That's right, 12 nights. It's an experience you don't want to miss. For complete rules and to enter for a chance to win, head to seattlerefine.com slash Windstar. Good luck, everybody. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the prettiest dessert of them all? The secret behind mirror cakes coming up. Here at Seattle Refined, we never get tired of hearing from you. Like us on Facebook, tweet us your story ideas, or shoot us an email telling us what you want to see on the show. You can find our inbox at hello at seattlerefined.com. Seattle Refined will be right back. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm George Swanson. It's no secret that we have a serious sweet tooth on Refined, and we have featured a lot of cakes on this show, but nothing compares to the works of art from a local baker. In one word, mesmerizing. When you think cake, the traditional layers and icing most likely come to mind, but not if you're Anastasia. <laughs> if this cake would be like regular cake, I would not be interested in Anastasia's business, Moose Boutique, specializes in something called mirror glazed cakes. The desserts are tasty perfections, and the process, well, as you can see, is satisfying to watch. And someone asked me, is it a real thing? I said, yes, it's a cake. It's not plastic? I said, no. <laughs> the secret is all in the glaze. It takes a lot of time and effort to get the icing just right so it perfectly smooths over the cake. The glucose is the, the ingredient that makes the, the shiny part. And usually when I have to do this, I really have to be focused and it still scares me every time I do this. As a kid, I always wanted to eat cake, but I never think how you make them. Like most people, Anastasia saw the mirror glazed cakes on social media and decided to learn the skill herself. I learned everything from um, online, like tutorials. I started to learn about mirror glaze and cake, and I was making cakes for every party we have, like birthday parties, our friends, every time. I just, that was like the best way for me to practice. 
and everybody was joking like Anastasi Anastasia's bakery soon is gonna be open something like that and then a couple of months we really did that like me and Maharma he helped me with this Anastasia now runs her own business where customers can order these mesmerizing mirror glaze cakes online and no two cakes are the same And if you're wondering, the answer is yes. The cakes taste as good as they look. That's Mousse Cakes by Mousse Boutique. <laughs> We've got a pretty awesome photo gallery of these mirror glazed cakes. To check it out and learn more about Mousse Boutique, head to SeattleRefine.com. Seattle Refine will be right back. Welcome back to Refine. If getting healthy in 2019 is on your to-do list and you are still kind of struggling with that goal, then there's a local company who wants to help out. Our sponsor, Skinny Seattle, is helping change lives in more ways than one. Refine's Malia Karlinski sat down with Dr. Timothy Panna and one of his success stories. Joining me today is Dr. Timothy Panna and his patient, Julia Sparza. Guys, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's wonderful to be here. You know, Julie, I was uh, learning more about your story, and I was so inspired, and I was so looking forward to meeting you, and I want to hear all about it, but i got to start with Dr. Panna. For people who don't know, can you tell us a little bit about Skinny Seattle and what makes it so unique? A lot of people are interested in basically improving their health and losing weight overall, but so many people out there today are struggling with weight loss. There's lots of different options that people have to lose weight, but so many of those are just simply focused on weight loss. And weight loss, while it's a wonderful goal, is basically just part of what we do. In fact, our program, is, as odd as it might sound, is not really focused on weight loss. It's focused on bringing the body back into a balanced state of health. And when that happens, then weight loss becomes the natural side effect. We are so confident in our process that we guarantee the results. In fact, we guarantee you're gonna lose at least 20 pounds, and sometimes people lose as much as 30 or even more pounds as they go through the program in just about a two month period of time. So Julie, why did you come to Skinny Seattle? Tell us about your journey. Um, I was definitely looking for something to help me get past a plateau. Um, I was very active. Um, I participated in several challenge groups, workout groups, and I was kind of feeling hopeless, you know? And I feel like there are so many programs out there, and I've tried lots of them. And a lot of times you do the program, you're disciplined, but those programs aren't one size fits all. Everybody's different. And so when I met Dr. Panna, I had a friend refer him to me, and, and uh, what I heard in her story was, there's hope for me. Um, and so that's really what draw, drew me to his office um, to sit down and have a consultation. So the, the thing is, when Julie came in, like she said, she was using some tremendous tools with extreme exercise programs. Some of them were super extreme. And she was already exercising discipline in terms of the foods that she was putting into her body. But ultimately, there's five typical roadblocks that can be challenges for people. And until those are identified and addressed and brought back into balance, then people are going to struggle. The first one is blood sugar imbalances. The other one is going to be digestive issues. The next one is going to be adrenal issues. So many people are dealing with physical, chemical, and emotional stresses. The next one is basically going to be in, in terms of hormonal imbalances. And then there's something called general metabolic disruption, which means people have a myriad of factors that are basically influ influencing each other. With Julie's particular situation, I can tell you that we had to identify what those roadblocks were and then give her a clear path that was based not on packaged foods, but on foods that you can buy from the store, real food that you, that you can cook at home and basically learn how to eat for the rest of your life. The most surprising thing for me was um, the number of things that were affecting my metabolism. Going through the program and being a good steward and doing what I was told and disciplined, I think at the end I lost a total of 55 pounds. Wow. When I started this process, my metabolic age was of a 78-year-old. Wow. And at the end, and we almost cried in the office together, uh, it was 36 years That's old. That's incredible. Yeah, and I'm not 36, so <laughs> you look like you're 36. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But honestly, it's just an amazing thing to see people blossom and flourish. They very quickly move from being a client to almost being more like family. Mm -hmm. And it's a very special experience. So for us, it's just a privilege. We feel like we, I have the best job in the world and I get to work with the best people in the world too. And he really is so genuine. Like he cares about you from the moment you walk into his office and he's so genuine and cares about you and that you are taking care of you. Um, it's 
It's awesome. Never had a relationship with that with any any doctor. <laughs> if you want to learn more about Skinny Seattle, Dr. Panna said you can come in for a consultation or easily go online and take a free health quiz to get the process started. We have all the information on SeattleRefine.com. All right, that's going to do for today's show. Thank you so much for joining us here on Seattle Refine. We'll see you next time.